Welcome to Luxury and Moderation, where we appreciate the finer things in life without going overboard. If you're new here, my name's Joanne, and every week I upload videos on luxury handbags and other lifestyle products to hopefully give you some really good information, or if you're just curious about hearing about these topics. So if you love what you hear and you're interested on these topics, please join me and subscribe below. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for being on this luxury journey with me already. In today's video, I just wanted to like talk about luxury as a concept, as something we're all interested in. So with that being said, the very first thing that I have to mention is obviously this is just my own opinions that I'm sharing. Luxury can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So not only do I want to hear your ideas and your feedback of what I'm sharing today, but I also thought it would be helpful as we continue this conversation of luxury items and luxury brands as I do more and more videos. And I thought that this video would help us give kind of like a baseline for um, an understanding of what I'm talking about when I refer to some luxury products in some way. So again, my luxury story began quite a while ago. Both my grandmother and my mother appreciated luxury brands, luxury items. And then when I went to business school, I actually took a course in luxury marketing. So this is the book that we kind of used as a textbook, and it's called The Luxury Strategy, Breaking the Rules of Marketing to Build Luxury Brands. So I found that in taking this luxury marketing course, um, it not only formalized some of the ideas that I had collected over time, but it also gave me a really useful framework for understanding what are all the options out there in the world. And it helped me organize you know, my own thoughts on each of these brands. And again, a lot of these might not be popular opinions or you might disagree. So it's definitely just a framework for people to build off of and to grow from. And it's not the end all be all. So I'm definitely not trying to kind of preach anything. Um, I just thought that it was um, interesting and also helpful to learn. So the very first concept that I want to talk about in terms of luxury is a luxury hierarchy. So for example, I think a lot of us already understand the concept of like really high, high luxury um, in terms of handbags that could be like Hermes. And then there's like the contemporary handbag brands like Coach or Tory Burch. Um, so there's like a tier, right? They're not all made equal. So the way that I see the hierarchy and the terminology that I would use is at the most base tier where there's a lot of people have access to these items. I would call this like the mass products. So these might be products or bags or whatever that might be available at Target or Walmart because, you know, Target makes really cute bags and they're at a really affordable price point. So again, these items and these brands are available to the masses. And then the next tier above from that is what I would call mastige, um, which is kind of like a mix between prestige and mass. So I think this is most clear when we think of beauty products, right? Like Ulta has a really good mix of like really, really high-end makeup, but also what's available at the drugstore. So kind of in that middle tier might be brands like Urban Decay or Benefit. And it's easier to think about Mastige in terms of beauty as well because that price point is also more affordable. It's not like hundreds of thousands of dollars like a bag would be, right? So it has a correlation with um, price point, I think, but that's not the only thing that defines these hierarchies. So I'll get into price a little bit later. And then the next tier up from Mastige would be Prestige. So then we have these prestige brands, which I think have some really nice quality 
They have a really nice story. There's also a little bit more expensive. So when I think of this prestige level, I kind of think of Marc Jacobs or Kohan and uh, Coach is like moving up there as well. You know, in the past couple of years, Coach has really focused on um, moving up market and doing more leather pieces. And then the next tier up from Prestige might be called Premium. And this Premium tier might be the most hard to define because when we really want to categorize like one brand in terms of like Prestige versus the one level up of Premium, like that might be a very fine line. And again, it might be different for everybody. And then actually in this Premium tier is most of the brands that we know and love today. Like... Dior, LV, Gucci, Prada, Burberry. And it's not until I understood what the top tier was, which is true, true luxury, that I really understood what is the difference and the defining line between these premium brands and luxury brands. Okay, so now that we have this like hierarchy in place, let's talk about the top tier, true luxury, what are the characteristics of luxury? So the very first characteristic is quality. And this is something that I have repeated in many of my videos. The very first thing that I look for when I'm interested in a product is the quality of the product must be there. For the most part, we are not going to value anything that is gonna fall apart in a couple years. Like we don't wanna spend our money on that, right? Like even if it's something at Walmart, whatever the thing we buy to do the thing that we ask, like if we buy toilet paper, we want it to you know, not fall apart in our hands. So at the base of everything, of all the products that we buy, no matter how expensive, is the quality of the product. So in terms of handbags, that means the quality of the leather, whatever that means to you. If you appreciate a shiny leather, a smooth leather, a soft and supple leather, like Bottega Veneta, or in other instances, I appreciate a very tough leather, like the Chanel Caviar, which is more durable, and that's what I value in that particular piece. Another thing to consider in terms of quality is like the stitching. Are they going to snag on things or rip apart? Is the thickness of the thread um, uh, good enough to hold the handbag together? So this quality of the product is an extension of what brands like to call savoir-faire. And that's like the know-how and the expertise of making these products, the history of knowing how to create these products. Like how does Louis Vuitton know how to make a canvas that is super durable, won't rip, can last a lifetime? Like that's not a canvas that other companies can replicate. So that's why nowadays you see a lot of advertising of how like Dior makes its bags and sews it together. Um, I think Hermes definitely has these videos as well, maybe Chanel. So that speaks to their expert knowledge on how to create these pieces. And then as an extension of that, the quality of these pieces. And that bleeds into the second quality of true luxury, which is this association with time. And there's two pieces of this. The first is that a lot of the know-how and the savoir-faire comes with time, right? A lot of these luxury brands have very long histories. And that's because in order to create perfect products, you have to have done the time, done the experiments, done the mistakes in the past, and after all that time, become an expert in your field, in your product. And then the second aspect of time is that many of these luxury products and luxury brands are timeless. So instead of looking back and looking at the history of expertise, you're looking forward and knowing that these brands, because they have such a long history, 
they will moving forward still have those expertise, still have classic pieces that will transcend fashion trends. So for example, when you think of these brands like Senrev, who say they have the luxury quality and expertise of the other luxury brands, and their bags are made in the same Italian factories as a lot of the other luxury brands are created in, that might be true. So they might have that first quality tier checked off. But in terms of time, Senrev has not been around for decades, like Louis Vuitton, like Chanel, like Dior, like these fashion houses, right? So when I think of true luxury, I wouldn't put Senrev in that tier because they don't have the time aspect. So it's not like any brand these days can just make a luxury brand because it takes time. It takes decades of people's opinions and people's acknowledgement of these brands to understand, is their product timeless? Will it still be fashionable in 10, 20, 50 years? And also, will these products truly have the quality to withstand 30 years of being used? For example, a lot of people talk about having their LV Neverfull and using it for every day, day in and day out, um, for work for 10 years. While Senrev doesn't have that um, time-tested uh, aspect yet. So we might, you might have a Senrev bag and use it every day, but have you used it as long as a Never Before has been used? Because Senrev is such a young company, that's just not possible. And the third characteristic of luxury would be a close association with art. And that again is because, first of all, a lot of these products are made by artisans who have the expertise of their craft to be able to create what sometimes we call works of art. And the concept of art is, again, very personal, right? We all view art in different ways. We all appreciate different colors, different sensory notes. I would say luxury products take an inspiration from art and it doesn't always have to be so blatant as like the Louis Vuitton collection where they put like Monet paintings on the LV canvas, but it can be just little slivers of something that inspired the designer, right? Like that's how artists work, right? Like they take a concept, they turn it over in their mind, they put it into products or visuals that we can appreciate and that speaks to us. So that's why when we, when I think of luxury, I also think it has to evoke some emotion in, in us, right? Like some bags do that for me and other bags don't. And the bags that don't, you know, that's the ones that might appeal to somebody else. So again, it's very personal and that's what makes it ever more precious to us in some ways. Um, and then number four concept of luxury is scarcity. So this one's pretty easy to understand, right? We know that, for example, Hermes does not make a lot of bags. There is a very low supply of a lot of their bags. There's a very low supply of a lot of luxury bags. And that's where like Chanel kind of toes the line between actually being scarce because you know it seems to us these days that everybody on instagram has one of their classic flaps right so that's a fine fine balance to maintain which is having enough products available to you know be in the world to be to have people aware of them but also not having so much product that it is you know at the mass level where everyone can have access to it. And because of scarcity, that's what creates the feeling of exclusivity, right? Everybody wants to be on the in crowd. Um, so luxury companies are really good at, um, at creating that like in crowd, out crowd duopoly of, you know, like if you have our bag, if you have our product, if you know about our brand, you are cool, you are fashionable, you are sophisticated, and if you don't have one of our bags, you are not. So creating a scarcity in product 
also helps with that um, that cultural um, idea. And the last quality of luxury is like how expensive it is, right? So I don't want to say exactly price because price should not dictate what is a luxury product. In fact, it should actually be the other way around, which is that all of the other four qualities that I named before this, which is quality, time, that association with art and emotion, um, and then finally scarcity, those are the things that actually make a product more valuable and therefore more pricey. So you can't just have a product that you made in a day and the seams are falling apart and the leather is like all scratched and whatever and you call it this is worth five thousand dollars that's not going to make the item luxury right just because the price is five thousand dollars it first has to stem from the quality of the piece right in order to be valued that much in order for people to want it for people to have an emotional connection to that product that's why they're willing to pay more for that product. In terms of Chanel, again, they're, they were very good at saying like, look at this scarce product. The classic flap was more scarce in you know the 90s where if you were in the in crowd, if you were an it girl, you had the bag. And that's what made people want to have that product, which is what caused people to made them want to pay thousands of dollars for that bag. If nobody wanted that bag, then they wouldn't value it that much. And then they would pay, they would be like, oh, maybe I'll pay like $100 for it. But I don't know if I would shell out $2,000 for that bag. So that's why the price of the actual product is the last quality that I mentioned. So I actually have a lot more thoughts on this topic, but I don't want this video to be too long. I feel like it's already too long. So I'll definitely share more of what I learned and my understanding of luxury in a later video. And I'll get into why like Dior, Louis Vuitton, Burberry, Gucci are actually only on the premium level of the hierarchy and not at the true true luxury level so stay tuned for that i really hope you guys enjoyed this conversation today let me know in the comments what you think if you agree i am super curious to hear your feedback please remember to subscribe below if you haven't already and i can't wait to see you in my next video bye